Oh, no. Oh, the bobs. Oh, the Brickman. They were used like shotgun shell of like... <laughs> Just like the pellets from a shotgun shell. Hello, everybody, Grace Still Plays, and we're back with more brick rigs. In the land of brick rigs, education is important. And for good reason. Like 30% of brick rigs is lawyers, 30% of brick rigs is insurance salesmen, 30% of brick rigs is architectural engineers, and the other 10% is just scumbags that get blown up. Over here, Rocket Shotgun has prepared a brand new headquarter building. Look at how majestic it is. Been completely redesigned from the ground up. It's got more facilities, more oomph, more grandeur. And I think it has like an antenna that sticks that an antenna, that's what I meant, that sticks up. Don't mind me just bringing up my antenna or whatever I call it. Wow, that's actually really quickly got erect. I had no idea it would move quite so fast. Thank you, Rocket Shotgun. So, let us head inside. You gotta open up the automatic doors over here. Immediately, we are greeted with the glorious gray on red colored rocket shotgun headquarter 2.0. A couple of brickmen hanging out behind the countertop over here to say hello to us. Over here on the side, we got the Bricktanic version 2. So the Bricktanic version 2 is a massive ship created by Rocket Shotgun and is based off of the Titanic and the first actual massive ship in Brick Rigs. The ship is so big that it is folded by default because it's no because it is longer than the length limit. This is a mini model. Rocket, we have blown up many Brictanics. And just because this one's a model, it isn't any it's not any safer. What is this over here? The Rocket Shotgun Rocket. The rocket from Rocket Shotgun's new profile picture and the new Rocket Shotgun logo. Over here we have the Happy Home, Rocket Shotgun's first ever published creation it's from the classic Roblox. You know. Looking at all of the different creations that people have made, it allows me the opportunity to see how individuals have evolved. Even in the, uh, even in the thumbnails, people are sending me kind of different things that they're making and stuff like that. I look at some of their old stuff that they make compared to the new stuff they make, and even the thumbnails are looking so much cleaner. We got a truck over here, been edited to reproduce to reduce the part amount. Now, what do we have in the cafe? What are they serving over here today? Got some hamburgers on the gr- what was that? I- Hold on, what? What? <laughs> okay. You know, I feel like I shouldn't be touching things when I don't know where they go. Something's moving somewhere. The switch is on the, uh, the grill at the top over there. We have some pizzas over here. Some delicious brick-style pizzas. Got your coffee pot. You got your microwave over here. Ah, look at this. Couple of hidden workers doing their thing. What happens when you go upstairs? No water zero down here, unfortunately. I'm not sure what everyone's drinking. Probably either just vodka or what is the other one? It's, uh, crude oil. Probably crude oil. All right. So this is Rocket Shotgun's brand new headquarter building. Now this is just the bottom floor, mind you. You gotta notice, there are plenty of floors for dirty plebs. Working for a second there, I thought I heard those computers click clacking. There are plenty of plebs here working hard for the various individuals in Bricksville. What are they doing for them? I, I'm not really sure. I don't know if we're trying to make it so maybe there's less pollution, or maybe people recycle more, or maybe the water's cleaner. Probably not, though. Now, should you make it all the way up to the top, right over here, you have the meeting room. You have the offices of the big dogs over here. You got Rocket Shotgun himself. I imagine he better have some big flat screen TVs up in here. Hold on, let me roll on in. No flat screen TVs. He's got his own cafe and stuff in here. Oh, never mind. Got a flat screen computer and a stack of paper. Now, what is this? Is this like the antidepressants that you need in order to run a business of this size? That's what this is, isn't it? You can't lie to me. I know all... Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Everything's fine. I'm sorry, Rocket. I didn't mean to move your stack of papers. You can't fool me. In order to run something this magnitude, you need a little something to keep you sane. And over here, my buddy Komodo apparently has his own room as well. See what's inside. Oh, a couple of mushroom-like plants. And as well as... I still want to know what these switches do. But anyway, grill top, microwave, a beautiful... Let me go ahead and jump right over the plants over here. A beautiful computer screen and... An, oh. I ended up teleporting myself through the wall. Now, Torpus has made the Torpus Aggregate, I think it's battery version two. Now in the distance, you're gonna notice that there's a building. 
and right here, a whole slew of rockets just went flying into the sky. Now you may be saying to yourself, great, that building that rocket shotgun made is like a mile away. There is no way that those rockets are gonna hit that building. They've gone too far. They've moved straight up into the atmosphere. How is it possible that they could have any level of precision and hit that building? Well, guess what? It's Torpus. That's how it happens. Let us wander over here. Let us wander over here and see just what happens. What kind of distance? You can't even see where they got spawned anymore. Oh, it's looking pretty good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, those rockets are amazing. I can't believe how accurate they are. I can't believe it. These things will go across a continent in order to blow up whatever is in their sights. That right there, now, it wasn't, they all didn't land like absolutely perfectly, but come on, that was pretty sweet, man. The, it took a good chunk out of the side of the building. I think that is the farthest, like, huge pitch rocket bombardment I have ever seen in brick rigs where you can have any level of accuracy. You know what though, maybe we just got lucky. Let's try it again. I'm very curious how well, look at how they fly in sync. They're all different colors too. I love that look. It's almost like the, uh, the blue angels or something like that flying off perfectly with one another. Now let us go over here by rocket shotguns building. Still looking pretty good. Like I said, a little bit of the base blew out. You got some cars over here that are kind of all messed up. Your little minis and stuff like that. I said that Brictanic was going down, and it's going to go down. Now, we have to look way up into the sky in order to see the forecast for today in Bricksville. And the forecast for today is very similar to the forecast yesterday, which is clear skies with a chance of nuclear rockets raining down from the heavens. How well will they fall? How close will they come? All right, a little bit off that time. A little bit off. This one's getting real close. Oh, man. The shrapnel blew everywhere. But the rocket shotgun building still stands. I sound disappointed, but you know, it still stands. It's a very lovely building. All right, all right. You talk me into it. We'll finish it off. New year, new name has made a squadron of explosive creatures called the Baneling Bomber. Or the Baneling Bombing? I think it's something like that. Now, this is basically a giant squadron of automated bombers. All you have to do is just press a single button, the page up button. And when you do this, they will go forth and destroy anything that opposes them. Now, unfortunately, there's a little bit of brick in the way. So I'm not sure how well this is going to go, but let's check it out. Right over here, they begin to smash into the lower floor of the rocket shotgun headquarter building. And man, this thing could take a wallop. It's still standing. All right, a lot of the employees have wandered outside to see what's going on. What happens when they get in the way of these things? Will they just blow up or will they plow through them? Let's take a look. All right, just kind of plowing through them right now. Oh, no. Oh, the bobs. Oh, the brickmen. They were used like shotgun shell. Of like <laughs> Just like the pellets from a shotgun shell firing into the rocket shotgun building, but still... The rocket shotgun building stands. All right, we gotta try and finish this thing off. Don't mind me as I fire purple smoke out of my engine. X Game Wolf loves making these battle bot style of vehicles. So over here we have, I think it's called like the crazy circular saw. Basically what it is, is it is a vehicle with triple circular saw cutting blades. Supposedly, it's perfect for taking out any structure that's in its... Wow, okay, it is pretty good at taking out structures in its way. Hold on. I want to see if we can saw cleanly through this building. You gotta line up and let her fly. How is it still standing? Look at it. There's like one window holding this... Oh, wait. Oh, oh, it's starting to topple. The building's starting to come down. We finally cut it out. There we go. Now, X Game Wolf builds a lot of destructive equipment, but over here he's built himself a little headquarter building. Well, a little headquarter building. A gigantic headquarter building. It's XFSHQ. It's guarded by a couple of small tanks over here. We have the laser version 2 hanging out as well. 
fairly low brick count. Not too much stuff that we have to deal with. He does have a, uh, a lovely... Look at this billboard sign. XFS. No one will ever miss that. Now, he has blown so much stuff up with his objects that I feel it's only fitting that we try and put his building to the test. All right, these buildings have proved pretty stalwart, but I have an idea on how we can generate enough firepower to take these things down, I think. What I have done is we have four sets of these little bombing runs all around the area. My computer is going to freaking hate me because we have like seven or 8,000 bricks in buildings and then we have about another 6,000 bricks in these little bomber guys. Now if I can, now these are automated, so all you have to do is get in the pilot seat, press the page up button, and then move to each one. If I can get all of these going at exactly the same time, I think we can run into these two buildings and blow them to kingdom come. Okay, here we go. They should all be going. All of the rockets are starting up. All of the bombers have begun moving. Let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit. This is also hoping that they don't, like, catch a cold with the physics or something like that and go flying off to the side. Now, these ones were a little bit closer than the rest, but we're gonna have two chunklets over here that I think are gonna hit right around the same time. All right, the first piece of bombing chunks coming in. Now, some of them go inside where there's the initial impact. Not too shabby. A little bit of bricks here and there. Over here in the rear-hand side, Another strong shot, but still the buildings looking at us sideways. The bomberlings flying upside down at this point, digging their talons into the building, but to no avail. I can't believe it. There really wasn't much damage. <laughs> some of these things are flying through the air. Look at this one over here. It's like some sort of like some sort of flying insect. Oh, right on top of the other one. What kind of luck was that? That's like when you throw the bottle flip and it ends up landing on, on the rim of a basketball hoop or something on the cap. Ah. Uh, I think everything's broken. I hear some rocket flying in the background somewhere. We've got some fire. We've got a little bit of damage. But unbelievably, all of those, all of those, those bombers didn't really do very much. Maybe it has to be in full speed. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to try this in waves. I'm going to try and get all these started, and then hopefully they come shooting in in four giant waves and do a bunch of damage that way. All right, I actually went ahead and staggered them a little bit for this. So, like, one's kind of on one side, then the other side, then the other side. I get the feeling that doing it in slow motion really makes them hate life. You can see... They're going sideways, long ways, all kinds of different ways. They're still running into the buildings, don't get me wrong. They're definitely still hitting the buildings. I just feel like they're kind of derping out. Yeah, that was a big derp right there. That was more derp than I had previously anticipated. Man, they really fly when you do it in slow motion like this. But I just can't figure out how I'm going to be quick enough to do it all in full speed. All right, we've got another idea. We've got this Zergling squadron over here. It's a giant attack squad of zerglings. Look at how horrifying they are. They actually have the little uh, the little spindly things with the spikes on them and everything. Now, I don't know if these blow up or what. Hold on. Let's see what kind of damage we can get going here. Run them in full speed. <laughs> it's just a wall of bricks. <laughs> they didn't do anything. They did... What is this building made out of? Like, for real... Oh, it caught on fire. But, I mean, like, it... Is there any way for... What happened over there? Why? The whole episode, no building was destroyed. I managed to save everything except for you. You ruined it. I hate to say it, but I think we, for those buildings, we would probably have to use the world's fastest lunch. Now, X Game Wolf also happens to have this... He calls it a hydraulic press. <laughs> I don't know if... If I would call it that, it is a horrifying beast of a creature with a giant slab of concrete that smashes whatever you put on this little pallet here. Now, how good is it at busting things up, I wonder? You knew the Brictanic was going to say hi for this. This is either going to go really well or really, really bad. 
I'm gonna do it in full speed first, and then we'll probably slow it down. Let's do it! Oh! Oh god! Oh gee! Oh! It like teleported through the Brictanic- Whoa! It just lifted the Brictanic up off the- Wow! Oh! Wow! Okay! It gutted the Brictanic. It gutted the entire Brictanic. It moved so fast that it like teleported through the top portion like a little bit. And then it just ripped the innards clean out of the entire ship. Look at how big this ship is. All right, Ragdoll Bob, I'm sorry, man. But you are our mighty test subject. What happens when a Ragdoll Bob meets the hydraulic press? Let's do it. Oh! That is gonna require a slowdown. Look, it is like the 4th of July. It's like the 4th of July, but with delicious giblets flying all over the place. All right, Ragdoll Bob. I'm sorry, man, but we salute you. Here we go. Let me roll on up here so we can see this. Yep. That's where it all begins. Oh, it does fold him down completely. But this time, the giblets don't go flying quite as far. They're all pretty much contained on the inside of the hydraulic press. Now, that that's completed. Oh, it's squirting out the side. Let's go ahead and lift it up here and see what happened. You know, it's he's still almost like a perfect shape of himself. I mean, yeah, it's a little gooey, but for the most part, you can see the outline of his original ragdoll Bob body. All right, prepare for overkill. We did the Brictanic, so now we're doing the Athenia. Oh, pray for my processor. Let her rip. Here we go! Oh, are we getting the teleport is the game crashing? There's like a there's like a 30% chance that the game is crashing right now. It okay. The the hydraulic instrument has managed to levitate through the top portion of the entire ship, and there's the explosion of parts. Unbelievably. Hold on, let's rip it out. Now, usually when you rip it out, that's when you get the true destruction. The back end is pulled completely off. The innards get tossed like a salad into the air. There's your, there's your different leaflets and tomatoes and stuff like that. And the boat itself is destroyed. Now, I feel that in slow-mo, you really get to feel the true destruction a little bit better, though. It blows me away how well this thing balances. All right, slow-mo, let's do it. The Athenia versus the hydraulic press. Down comes the hammer. Right on the top. It's making a giant cruise ship sandwich. Tie in fiber. And completely and utterly destructicating for your processor. Is it just me or is the boat literally folding in upon itself like the time-space continuum is getting messed with? It feels like it was getting shorter or something. Oh. There it is. All of the bricks have exploded through the middle of the hydraulic press and the front and back portion are split in half. This hydraulic press is amazing. Let me go ahead and speed this up and see what happens. Yeah, the two pieces just collapse from the pedestal that stuff gets sat on. You can see right over here, the other side of the ship just ripped clean to pieces. All right, here's what I'm going to do. You can actually see it dancing a jig in the background. What I'm going to do right after it gets done doing a full flip, land on the wheels, land on the wheels, land on the wheels. Oh. Uh, Oh, oh, it was so close. What I'm going to do is I'm going to teleport this building inside of the hydraulic area as quickly as I can and then activate it and see how much of the building we can destroy. Oh, I was a fool. Oh, I was a fool. The building exploded. It's sending everything sideways. The hydraulic press is totally working, but it doesn't matter because the building just turned into a thousand pieces and up to Neptune it goes. You can actually see as the friction causes the pieces to catch fire and exit our atmosphere. And what's left? Where did the hydraulic press go? Oh. Oh! There's some pieces of the hydraulic press. This is interesting because the hydraulic press was on uh, god mode. So it's pretty impressive that somehow it managed to get destroyed. Oh, I'm totally wrong! Here's all the hydraulic press just danced around over here by the, the hilltops. I'm guessing that was all the, the uh, bottom portions of the Phoenix building then. All right, let's do it. Let's hydraulic press a giant plane. Full speed, 
and then slow motion. I have a feeling. I wonder if it'll teleport through the plane. Let's find out. Oh, oh, no, it exploded it. I forgot about the engines. The plane is very volatile. You can see what's left of the fuselage over there just gets turned to ash. All the pieces, it's weird, it's like floating around. All the pieces scattered across the entirety of the hillside, except for the tail over here. This tail is like the one bit that's still in mostly one chunk. Oh, I found the nose of the plane, guys. You know, the cockpit is in decent condition, all things considered. Airplane integrity testing take two. Here we go. So, uh, how good is the engineering of the uh, Keck airline over here, I kind of wonder. Let's find out as we bring our hydraulic press directly on top of it. Eh have a couple of uh, engineering flaws right there may have a couple of engineering flaws not too sure now the tail is very strong very strong the rest of the plane though is kicked like a field goal across the city of Bricksville anyway folks hope you enjoyed this episode of Brick Rigs where we had the opportunity to see some really stalwart buildings and by the way War Challenger had mentioned over in the Discord that he is putting together a bunker that is supposedly completely unbeatable. I can see part of the plane just crashing into the hillside in the background there. That is supposedly unbeatable. He says if we can find a ground-based vehicle that doesn't weigh a billion pounds that can actually break its walls down, he will make us a creation of our choice. So... Let me know if you guys have anything in the comments section below. Until the next time, folks, stay foxy and much love.